science is the key for our questions and confusion concerning COVID-19 pandemic. In the past uh, several weeks, we've seen and been hearing about therapeutic treatment about the virus. The race to test and manufacture drugs to fight COVID-19 has been ramped up on a global scale. People are looking at life-saving drugs like remdesivir before a vaccine is available. Meanwhile, Chinese medicine also offers possibility in the fight against the virus. To help us break down the complex world of therapeutic treatment, I'm happy earlier to be joined by Dr. Ling Sheng, Dean and Bayer Distinguished Professor of the School of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Tsinghua University. He helped us to understand the complex world we are in now in terms of therapeutic treatment. I'm joined by Ding Sheng, Dean and Professor from School of Pharmaceutical Sciences with Tsinghua University. Professor Ding, what a pleasure. Likewise. Let me start by mm -hmm. asking you about remdesivir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess no discussion about therapeutic treatment now can escape the name remdesivir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain. Tell me more, Professor. How would you assess the effectiveness of this therapeutic treatment? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, the ultimate test uh, for evaluating a drug uh, effectiveness is really a clinical trial, mm. uh, especially uh, the, the late stage uh, phase three clinical trial. That's really about assessing a drug's uh, clinical efficacy. Um, certainly, uh, remdesivir, uh, as we all know, uh, preclinically uh, has uh, perhaps the most solid evidence that can really uh, inhibit uh, this uh, coronavirus mm. and also in animal models uh, uh, was demonstrated to have certain efficacy uh, against uh, a related coronavirus like SARS and MERS. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we had really a uh, big hope uh, for this uh, potential drug. Anthony Fauci, for example, his organization was pretty much leading the trial in the United States mm -hmm. about remdesivir. He apparently very hopeful about uh, finally mm -hmm. a possible treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the one led by Professor Wang Chen here in China was the result termed mm -hmm. as negative. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we also heard about the Stanford University and some of the other entities testing the same mm -hmm. therapeutic treatment than remdesivir. But the results seem to be quite varied. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. should we understand the differences? Uh, yeah, so uh, from the very uh, recent um, uh, reporting uh, of uh, several different uh, clinical studies of remdesivir, uh, it appears uh, the results or the outcome uh, is a little bit different. Mm. Uh, but I would say overall, actually, um, uh, the results from those clinical studies actually are quite similar. It's uh, impossible to be similar. I mean, you heard about uh, the mm -hmm, results mm -hmm. coming from Professor Wang yeah. Chen's team mm -hmm. saying it is negative, mm -hmm, meaning mm -hmm. it's not necessarily effective, mm -hmm. apparently. But from uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Fauci, it's mm -hmm. actually yeah. quite effective. Yeah. How should we understand this? Yeah, so let, let, let me uh, uh, make it uh, uh, more clear. Okay. Um, the, the outcome or the conclusion of different uh, two major uh, randomized controlled uh, double-blinded trials uh, are actually different. But the overall results or our understanding of this drug actually is quite similar. The difference is actually uh, what we call a clinical endpoint defined by those two studies actually are different. Mm -hmm. in, our, uh, uh, in the study actually conducted in China, uh, we actually um, treat the severe patients and also uh, define the clinical um, uh, define actually patients uh, into six different uh, clinical level uh, for patients actually can improve over two different level we call that time to improvement mm -hmm. so, so that's sort of our China clinical trial uh, improvement definition so it has to be uh, improvement over two different uh, clinical uh, uh, level but in the US uh, the trial endpoint actually in terms of improvement was defined uh, differently or quite differently. Uh, so simply to say it's actually easier to achieve that uh, improvement. Uh, so based on those two different uh, clinical definition, clinical endpoint, mm -hmm. the results actually uh, are different in terms of uh, time to you know, improvement. Thank you so much for the very professional explanation. 
down to earth too. Mm -hmm. But professor, this brought a lot of confusion mm -hmm. to the general public about whether this drug is really helpful or not. Mm -hmm. And also I would assume for those who do not have to deal with drugs every day, mm -hmm. for example, uh, medical personnel at a different department mm -hmm. and different, uh, in different expertise would make them also confused mm -hmm. as to what to apply at what time to mm -hmm. whom. Mm -hmm. Now, at this stage, we are all desperately looking for therapeutic treatment. Yep. So mm -hmm. are these trials, as we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm really likely to help us. I mean mm -hmm. us, yeah, not yeah. meaning just those in the trials, but rather the general Tri population. Mm -hmm. uh, about seven billion strong we are talking about, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. for the next wave to come, if mm -hmm. there were any. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think what we can uh, really conclude from those uh, early on, uh, those early studies really, uh, remdesivir has, certainly has some effect, uh, especially uh, when patients uh, are treated uh, early uh, certainly actually uh, reducing actually uh, uh, ho hospitalization time mm. uh, for those patients. That was said to be from 15 uh, to 11 days, uh, right? Yeah, roughly. So, so that's actually significant, mm. right? Uh, so you basically, you, uh, you can actually, uh, the, the hospital resources actually uh, are, you know, uh, much less consumed by, you know, patients. Right. Uh, um, so that's, uh, that's significant. So here's the thing, mm -hmm. what is effectiveness mm -hmm. and what is cure? How mm -hmm. should we understand the two terminologies? It just sounds so, you know, mm -hmm. common, these two things mm -hmm. that we use every day, but now when it comes to real issue, it's mm -hmm. become very crucial, Professor. Yeah, certainly what I, I would say, uh, it's not a cure means uh, if I had a disease, if I, if I had COVID-19, uh, especially uh, in the severe stage, uh, if I take this medicine, uh, the chance actually um, this molecule, this drug actually can, can cure my disease, the chance it's not that high. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, based on the current clinical study actually, uh, Got it, it. it doesn't differentiate actually uh, taking the medicine versus not even taking this mm -hmm. drug. Uh, so there's actually no, no difference. That's why we will say it's, it's not a cure. Mm but it, it may have some effect on certain patient population. Right. So that's what we know about you know, the, the current drug repurposing efforts because early on uh, when we want to find a drug to deal with this you know, epidemic uh, situation, this emergency, uh, we can only find, we can only hope for, uh, hope to find actually old drugs uh, developed for something else that can be used for, for treating this disease. Mm. Uh, now we know there, there are many of those uh, currently in different mm. clinical studies. Right. None of those actually are that efficacious. They may only address some patient population mm. uh, with certain disease characteristics. Uh, like remdesivir, certainly uh, the drug actually with the most solid evidence, mm -hmm. uh, it, can, uh, it can work, uh, it tar certainly targets uh, this essential uh, uh, viral protein actually important for uh, virus replication. Right. But uh, given uh, the, the clinical studies, we know uh, it has some effect uh, um, and how actually we can better use a drug remain to be further determined. Uh, I think now the, um, the efforts, it's really about uh, doing sort of larger trials mm. to better understand actually which patient population mm. and also perhaps uh, with what type of drug combinations can be used to, to better treat the patient. But this is a very complicated process we're mm -hmm. talking about here, and it's mm -hmm. very time-consuming. Now, the urgency is we mm -hmm. are likely, unfortunately, going to face another wave mm -hmm. of the pandemic, mm -hmm. according to most of the scientists we talked to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. By the winter, coming mm -hmm. winter, mm -hmm. when it is interacting with the flu season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So from now until then, we only have a summer and mm -hmm, short mm -hmm. autumn. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. we have enough time, Professor? Even on this drug? Mm -hmm. uh, given the last few months uh, efforts in terms of how we can, you know, identify the infected individuals, uh, how we can really do, you know, this uh, physical distancing, some other practice yeah. to really isolate, contain, you know, this, uh, this infected mm -hmm. uh, individuals. Uh, actually, overall, the strategy uh, works quite well, certainly with uh, economic, you know, sacrifice. 
Uh, but certainly now we know at least there's one way to really deal with mm -hmm. uh, this, you know, uh, transmission, this, uh, this infection. On top of that, now we also know uh, we have found and also clinically validated uh, certain drugs like remdesivir showing certain clinical efficacy. Yeah. Uh, in the coming months, certainly we will know how we can really better use them to treat, you know, patients. Uh, okay. But also, we know now we're doing, uh, we're developing vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, we're isolating uh, the neutralizing antibody from recovered patients. Uh, those actually, like vaccines, uh, like the neutralizing antibodies, uh, those are new, new drugs or new medicine uh, that, that are more specifically developed, discovered and developed for, for COVID-19. Professor Ding, it's not just a the Western medicine to most of the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's also the Chinese medicine. Now, mm -hmm. Professor Zhong Nanshan, who is very well respected the epidemiologist in mm -hmm. this country, has been pretty much a stand the stage for a Chinese medicine called Lianhua Qingwen. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to translate that mm -hmm. into English. It's mm -hmm. quite poetic, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, traditional Chinese medicine. All right, there we go. Uh, mm -hmm. So how should we understand what Professor Zhong has been talking about, the so-called mm -hmm. effectiveness of this mm -hmm. Chinese medicine? Mm -hmm. And as going the debate mm -hmm. in the world about both the content mm -hmm. and the scientific evidence, mm -hmm. as well as the effectiveness of Chinese medicine vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the Western medicine, how should we understand this mm -hmm. idea now? Uh, I think uh, in general, uh, there has been some confusion uh, about the Western medicine and the traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. Uh, certainly, um, the, the two scientific practice is different. For Western medicine, it's really about uh, what we call a re reductionist approach. A disease is caused by a single defined reason, and the drugs actually uh, can really modulate, you know, deal with that particular disease causing mechanism. Mm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a relatively linear, you know, uh, causal relationship. Right. But in Chinese medicine, uh, it's more about holistically how different uh, systems, uh, uh, how, how different organs, tissues uh, interact with each other mm. and, and, and modulate the disease state. Uh, uh, so so uh, I would say both of them uh, has their uh, scientific rigor. Um, and, and you mentioned uh, uh, for treating this COVID-19, uh, uh, what I've heard is really uh, there are uh, a few of those um, traditional Chinese medicine uh, that were uh, used uh, and actually um, uh, tested actually in, in those different clinical settings, whether mm -hmm. it's a mild, moderate disease patient or severe uh, disease mm -hmm. uh, uh, state uh, and demonstrate a certain uh, clinical uh, efficacy. Uh, so ultimately, I think uh, we can really do head-to-head, -head, what we call head-to-head -head comparison. Yeah. For example, remdesivir uh, and also uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, certainly, we can really uh, group, you know, patients uh, um, and actually uh, mm -hmm. have them tested by different, ha have them treated by uh, different drugs, uh, whether it's a, a single molecule like remdesivir where it's really a defined mixture of uh, herbs, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, I think actually uh, um, it can be, it, it is conceivable, mm. uh, uh, their clinical efficacy and also safety uh, can be compared mm. uh, in now clinical there, study. There is an issue about traditional Chinese medicine. I'm not saying problem, mm. but rather an interesting issue as we see some kinds of traditional medicine, even when they are being made uh, already with uh, well-designed uh, mm -hmm. and defined herbs, mm -hmm. um, could vary from one to another, mm -hmm. depending on which factory mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. coming from. Mm -hmm. So even with defined, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, shall I say, combination mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. herbs, mm -hmm. there could be minor differences. Mm -hmm. So how should we understand, once again, that mm -hmm. issue? That, that's a very important uh, point. Uh, but again, uh, that actually can be addressed uh, by, you know, modern uh, analytical method. Uh, we can actually use actually uh, very specific uh, analytical tools 
uh, to really uh, quantify actually uh, each component uh, uh, actually to, to make it standard. So there's a misconception that the Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, cannot be, you know, uh, trialed or proved uh, in Western countries. That's, that's not the case. Uh, actually, uh, there are actually already proved uh, for example, green tea, mm -hmm. it's a polyphenol extract. That, that was approved uh, in the Western country. And also, there, there are several other, actually, traditional Chinese medicine currently being trialed in the U.S., uh, in Europe. And actually, they, they really meet uh, those, actually, U.S. Or, or European regulatory requirements in terms of uh, standardization mm. of those different components. So that can be done. Further to develop mm -hmm. on that, we talk about the science part, but what about the other complicated factors? How mm -hmm. do they filter in to this search of therapeutic, of this mm -hmm. therapeutic treatment of COVID-19? For example, economic benefits. Uh, whether one company has mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. IPR or the others have, uh, mm -hmm. whether that can be shared if mm -hmm. this becoming a pandemic, which is already. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, what about geopolitics? Mm -hmm. Will one country, one company has mm -hmm. the access to the real cure, mm -hmm. the others would also have access to it? So mm -hmm. these are mm -hmm. complicated but actually also pragmatic issues mm -hmm. we have to th think about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Professor, from your mm -hmm. perspective? For this uh, COVID-19, uh, we've seen actually very significant uh, efforts from the biopharma industry. A uh, lot of uh, companies, uh, they're putting uh, resources at risk to develop therapeutics. Mm. So overall, uh, I think that's a, a very positive uh, a signal, uh, actually, uh, we're mm. seeing uh, during this very difficult time. And whether there's uh, uh, still some uh, geopolitical consideration, uh, I think it, it could still uh, be in some people's mind. But I think uh, as a community, uh, as an industry, uh, this is a global issue. Right. Uh, overall, I think um, people can really work together uh, uh, to really uh, uh, tackle this disease. Final question uh, for you, Professor. I have enormous amount of questions, but I think for now, final question mm -hmm. for you, Professor. Um, what do you think now are some of the most important priorities to put our resources in, in terms mm -hmm. of searching our way to a real therapeutic treatment, mm -hmm. even a real cure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have limited resources, limited time, mm -hmm. limited global mm -hmm. pool of talents mm -hmm. in this. So what are the priorities? Uh, in my view, uh, our next priority is really to um, develop, uh, validate the vaccine. Uh, uh, only the vaccine actually uh, can really help us you know, return to normal life. Because I would say currently uh, we do have, uh, you know, supporting treatment, uh, you know, uh, some other traditional Chinese medicine, remdesivir, and also some other, uh, you know, uh, uh, clinical candidates. Overall, we can really deal with this current situation, in my view.